Hi, I'm Gary from Helix. Welcome back to the channel. You may have previously seen our videos on the 505 and the 407, but today we're very excited to introduce you to this, the Bell 429. The Bell 429 is a light medium twin helicopter. It was first certified in 2009 and around 500 have been produced since then. It's used in every category from law enforcement, HEMS, Parapublic, SAR and corporate. What we're going to focus on today is corporate as that's what this aircraft is configured for. So now we're stood alongside the 429, you really do get a scale of how big this aircraft is. I'm six foot two and you can see how much it towers above me. And you can really see now here is the top of the cabin how good the passenger compartment is. There's only one way to really see that and that's to open the doors and have a look. As you can see with both of these cabin doors open the access to the aircraft is is huge. There is a flight step just below the cabin floor for easy access and there are two grab handles up here so getting in the aircraft is very easy which is clearly important. This particular 429 is geared for six passengers but you can have different options. You can have five place with a unit here for drinks, etc. You can have two units and four seats, but all of the interior is removable. So you could actually have two different options. You could have a six seat and a five seat option, just in case you wanted to change for each mission that comes along. 49 is a very fast aircraft. It's 155 knots. It's very flat in profile once in the cruise. A lot of aircraft tend to sit very nose down. The mast is tilted forward to give you better forward speed. But with this aircraft, it's very flat, so you don't feel you're hanging in your seat belts and you don't find that you're, you're looking slightly down. Noise levels are very good in the 429, but the main really good feature for me is vibration level. This aircraft is glass smooth. So it's great I've told you how big this cabin is and great for leg room and headroom, etc. But the only way to really show you that is to climb in and show you. So as I said previously, I'm over six foot, six foot two. My headroom is great, even in the middle seat, there's no difference. And this particular aircraft, as you'd expect on an aircraft of this class, has air conditioning in the rear. And what you tend to find is as you put air conditioning in the ceiling to get the vents, it pulls the whole height down, which can decrease headroom. Not the case with the 429. If I call Becca over to just join us in the rear cabin. So you can see two people on board, you've got fantastic legroom. So you're not sat with all your knees intertwined, which nobody really likes. If you can just pull your door to, Becca, and I'll close mine. As we said earlier, this is the profile in flight, very flat profile in flight. But even being tall, you don't have to bend down to see out the windows. You've got these huge windows, so it brightens the whole cabin up, makes it less claustrophobic. So it makes it a really enjoyable place to be. And from any seat, the visibility is fantastic. So. As we said, six people on this particular aircraft, great. We're all off to Courchevel to go skiing for the weekend, which would be lovely. Where do we put all our cases, all our luggage? Luggage is always a problem on helicopters. Not the case with the 429. Now this particular 429 only has the side loading door for the luggage area. You can. As an optional extra, put two clamshell doors here, which open up onto the sides, and that will allow you to put bicycles, barbecues, anything you can imagine to fit in this large cavernous area. So we've spoken a lot about some features on the 49, mainly about speed, comfort, size of the cabin, etc. But there's some other things we should mention about the aircraft that you may be deciding to buy. 
Every seat in the 429 is a crash-worthy seat. It's an unpleasant subject, nobody likes talking about that. It's from the crew seats to every seat in the rear cabin. Also, this one is a skidded version of the 429, but also comes with wheeled landing gear. Some people may just prefer to have retractable undercarriage. The aircraft is powered by two Pratt & Whitney 207D1 engines. Very reliable, very proven engine, engine within the industry. But something else you may not have noticed, this side of the 429 is a one-piece carbon fibre shell. And you'll notice that there's very few rivets on this aircraft. There has to be a few because of construction, the way it's done. But it's a very clean composite aircraft. Now that reduces weight but increases strength. So these are great safety features. Looking on the tail boom, again, the same as the sides, you'll notice that there's hardly any rivets. So this again is a uh, much lighter construction but extra strength, but also gives you these beautiful clean lines. This 49 is in maintenance during Group 3, which is the most modern way of maintaining a helicopter at the moment, and it actually reduces your downtime. So you'll find that the aircraft is more available than other aircraft that you could buy, and your maintenance costs will be significantly reduced. Moving to the end, you can see it has got a rather large fin on it. It is a fast fin as well in design with this part here, but this large fin also unloads the tail rotor and the cruise. The tail rotor on the 49 is quite an interesting design. You can see it's four-bladed, but actually it's a stack tail rotor. So you can see these are actually independent. And you'll also notice it's in an X pattern. So one of the advantages of having four blades over two, you can make the blades smaller to get the same authority, but also I'll be able to put them in this X pattern. You can spin the blade slower, which reduces noise. Now a lot of the noise, as we know, comes from the tail rotor. So the slower you can spin it, the less noise there is. So for sensitive areas, this is a really good feature. As we said earlier, if you're going to have clamshell doors as an optional extra, this would be the other door that comes up this side. So it really does give you a cavernous boot. Moving forward, you'll see there's only one fueling point on a 429. All the fuel is from here. There isn't two caps, one either side. This just makes life easier. There's no fuel management on a 429. On other aircraft, you have to pump fuel and pump it around the aircraft to balance tanks. The worse you'll get, because sometimes one engine will burn slightly more fuel than the other, there's just one balance button on the screen that you just hit, it will balance the tanks, that's it. But there's no fuel management. You'll notice as well on the side, pre-flight steps here, hand holds up here, so doing a pre-flight in the field is, is very easily possible. You don't need ladders to do it. You know, as we said earlier, large aircraft, so you know, the climb up is very important. A lot of the maintenance on this aircraft is actually done from underneath, from these panels. So there isn't always the need to remove the interior to get the maintenance carried out. Here we have our Pratt & Whitney 207D1 engines we spoke about earlier. Moving forward, here is our transmission and combining gearbox. Now there's a test to get the aircraft certified that the gearbox has to pass a 30 minute dry run test. I was told by the, the factory that this ran for an hour and a half before they actually switched the machine off. So there was huge redundancy in that gearbox. That gearbox really is a tough unit. And you'll see just mounted on the side here, these are the live mounts. The live mounts are what's responsible for giving this 429 such a smooth ride. In this forward cabin, that's where the dual hydraulic pack is. So there is greater redundancy again there with the hydraulic system. So we've touched on quite a few of the features of the 429 today. What we haven't talked about is the front end and it wouldn't really be a good video without talking about the pilot side would it so let's take a look so here we are in the front of the 429 clearly my favorite place to be one of the first things that you may notice is it's got a very low instrument panel compared to many other light medium twins which have a much larger instrument panel this makes life much easier for confined areas, particularly at night when you're coming into lands so that you don't have to turn the aircraft at 45 degrees and look through the side window to be able to see the landing site correctly. Visibility of the aircraft really is absolutely fantastic. You may also have noticed that there's no overhead circuit breakers and no circuit breakers between the seats as you get on other aircraft. Standard configuration for the 49 is two screens, one PFD on the right, one MFD to the left. This particular 49 is configured for dual pilot IFR. This is why we have the addition of the third screen on the left. Here we also have a Garmin 750, 650 and the SAM standby instrument. Looking across the top, we have our fire bottles here, engines one, engines two, our engine fuel valves, engine one, engine two, our engine control system, whether we're in torque or MGT and our panel lights. And obviously here on the end, engine out one and two. So you can see across the top, it's very clean. 
Here on the lower panel, we have various switches for whatever equipment is fitted. Here we have our engine bypass uh, switches for engines one and two. Should the IVF become blocked, you'll see a caption come up on here. So we can press the switch to open the bypass door. CVDR test here, autopilots one and two, trim and traffic announcement, mute and our TCAS switch. Depending on which kit you have, you have various other switches along here that would be needed for various operations. Here we have our intercom, autopilot controller is just here, cargo switch is here, environmental control system here, and our lighting panel here. Moving up the panel, this is the pilot interaction panel here. Very, very simple compared to other light medium twins. So you can see here we have our hydraulic systems one and two, pitot-static left and right, generators one and two, battery master here, buzz switches are all along this row here, and these are our fuel balance pumps for when we're refueling to open the valves so that we can refuel all the tanks and our emergency battery switch here. So as you can see, it's a very simple layout, very simple for a light medium twin helicopter. And in fact, it's easier than some light single VFR helicopters. I hope you've enjoyed this video on the Bell 429. If you have any comments or questions, please get in touch in the normal way. Please also keep an eye out. We'll have a video on our brand new 505 demonstrator in the next few weeks and also a check A video on the Bell 407 GXI. As with always, anything you need, please get in touch.